and rejoice therein. God is good, and he's worthy to be praised. Come on, put those hand-clapping emojis in the comment section. Um, God is good. He's worthy. Giving us another Sunday to enter into his presence, to worship him. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's what we're here to do today. We're here to worship and praise our God. Certainly, we give honor to our Christ, who's the head of all of our lives. Certainly, to Reverend Golden and to our deacons and to um, those who are here at the church. Praise God for my wife and my children and the deacon wives, our mothers, members, visitors, and friends who are watching on Facebook. Um, it's good to be alive. We're here, as we stated, to worship God. That's why we're here. This is the Lord's Day. Every day is a day of thanksgiving, and every day is the Lord's Day, but particularly Sunday has been set aside while we worship God, and that's what we intend to do today. Just want to do a few housekeeping. Um, I would ask all of you, those of you who are, are our members those of you who are faithful followers of our church, I ask you to do this first. I ask you to tag somebody, tell somebody, text somebody that we're on, and let them enjoy the word of God and the worship of his name with you on today. Host a watch party. Um, put it in the story section of your Facebook page. Whatever you have to do, um, do it. Uh, let somebody know we're in for worship. Secondly, if you haven't subscribed to our church YouTube, YouTube's page, please subscribe to our YouTube's page. Uh, it's TMO Church. You type in TMO Church in the YouTube section uh, or the search bar section of, on YouTube. You can find our church. If you can't find it that way, get on our Facebook page. Uh, our watch night service was uploaded, and the service or the sermon that I preached for our church anniversary back on the third Sunday of November, that was uploaded on Wednesday. That'll take you directly to our YouTube's channel. Please, uh, ma'am, please, sir, subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can watch previous sermons that have been uploaded, and more sermons to come will be uploaded for your uh, edification. I won't say enjoyment, but for your edification that you may grow by the word. Listen, we're uh, open for operation, and so we have our finance team under the canopy. They're waiting on you to give your tithes and your offering, and um, also you can mail it in, P.O. Box 49, West Point, Mississippi, 39773. Or you can utilize PayPal, and that email address is garmstrong4 at comcast.net. Then click on our church uh, page, and then you can give to our ministry. Um, you don't have to be a member to give. You can sow into this ministry, and I promise you um, this is good ground, and God will richly bless your life if you sow into the ministry of Third Mount Olive MB Church. Then I want to invite our members, want to invite our followers to our Wednesday prayer at 12 noon. Happen from 12 noon to 1 p.m. every Wednesday. So you can call in. The number is 978-990-5102. And the ASX code is 19364-37. With that same number, you could call in on Sunday morning, beginning at 9 a.m. to about 9.45 or longer. Uh, we'll be on for our adult Sunday school. So please utilize those numbers and that access code where you can pray with us or you can join us for Sunday school. Then I want to urge all of our parents at 5 p.m. on Saturdays, we have our youth um, Sunday school. And we're asking every parent that's a member of our church, whether you got grandchildren, your nieces, or nephews, invite your neighbor's children on 
um, to our Zoom Sunday School, and we have that information on the flyer on our Facebook page where you can access the Zoom and you can be, uh, your children and you can be richly blessed by the Word of God. I needed to do that to inform you of what we're doing, and I know many have been wondering about when will, when will we return to in-person worship. I'll let you know uh, at a later date. Uh, a time and date when we will return. Until then, we'll continue to worship uh, via Facebook uh, virtually coming into your house. And I like the slogan that the Church Without Walls have, inviting God's house into your house. And so that's what we're doing. If you're at home, at work, listen, tell somebody that church is about to start and they need to come in and worship with you. At this time, our praise team will come with two selections to open us up. A representative from our deacon ministry will come to give scripture and prayer, and then we'll go on uh, with the service. Praise the Lord to your mouth. We're just going to sing this song that says, All give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Type that, all give thanks. All give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and he is good. All give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. All give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, yes, He is good. All give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, yes, He is good. For He's worthy, for He's worthy, worthy, for He is good, yes, He is good. For He is worthy. Worthy, for he is good, yes, he all is good. Thanks, all give thanks, all give thanks. All give thanks unto, unto the Lord, he is good. for he is good, he is good. yes, he is good. All give thanks, all give thanks unto the Lord, yes, he is good, yes, he is good. One more time, all give thanks, all give thanks, all give thanks unto, unto the Lord, for he is good. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks, yeah. Oh, give thanks unto, unto the Lord. For he, for he is good. Yeah. Yes, he, he is, is so good. For he is worthy, worthy. worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy, yeah. worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks yeah. unto the Lord, for he is good. Yeah. Yes, he is Somebody good. ain't got it yet. Oh, give, oh, give thanks, thanks unto the Lord, unto the Lord oh, the for he is good. Yeah. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks, yeah. thanks unto, unto the Lord, for he is good. He is good. He is good. He is good. Oh, 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 give oh, thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yeah. He's so worthy, 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 for he is good, yes he is good, he's he so worthy, yeah. worthy, yeah. worthy, yeah. worthy yeah. for he is good, yes he is he's good, he's so worthy, worthy, yeah. worthy, yeah. worthy yeah. for he is good, oh, yeah. yes he is good, he's so worthy, he's worthy, worthy, worthy. Yeah. For he is good, yes he is good. 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 Oh, give thanks, oh, 
give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. He is so good. He is good. All give thanks, All give thanks unto, unto the Lord, for he is good. He is good. Yes, he is good. Yeah. He is good, and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Somebody just say, he has never lost a battle. Type that on the screen. He has never lost a battle. Never lost a battle. We just want to sing this song that says, he has never lost a battle, and he never will. He never will. He never will, yeah. So he is my faith. Father, calling me out of the dark, and night cannot whisper away what he said in the light. He is my firm foundation, my anchor won't be moved. The storm is make a lot, but my soul is on fire with this word. Oh, so when listen to the sound of power on my lips. For Jesus has broken the curse, and he has never lost a battle. And who are you, great mountain, yeah, that you should not bow low? Oh, Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle. And he never will, he never will. And he never will, he never will. And he never will, he never will. He is my faithful. He is my faithful. Calling me out. Calling me out of the darkness. And night cannot whisper. What he said in the light. He is my firm foundation. He is my firm my go on, yeah. The soul is make a lot, but my soul is on fire with this word. Oh, so we'll listen to the sound. We'll listen to the sound. A power. A power on my life. Jesus has broken the curse. Jesus has broken the curse. He has never lost, never lost a, battle. a battle. Who are you? Who are you, great that you should not bow low. You should not bow but low. But Jesus defeated the darkness. Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost. He has never lost yeah, a battle. battle. And he never will. And he never will. Never will. And he never will. And he never will. He never will. I know he never will. And he never will. He never I know will. he never will. And he never will. He never will. You never be defeated. No. He never will. He never will. And he never will. He never will. He never will. He never will. Oh, he never will. And he never will. He never will. He never will. Oh, our great defender, our strong tower. Oh, he has never lost a battle. He has never lost a battle. Our great defender, our great defender, our strong tower. Our strong He's never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. 
He's never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. Our great defender. Our great defender. Our strong tower. Our strong tower. He has never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. He has never lost a battle. Our great defender. Our great defender. Our strong tower. He's never lost a battle. 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 Ever since I've been born, he has never lost a battle. Even back in the old years. He has never lost a battle. He has never lost a battle. Yeah. He's never lost a battle. 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 He is my faithful father. And he's calling me out of the dark. And night can night whisper away what he said in the light. And he is my firm foundation. My anchor won't be moved. The songs make a lot, but my soul is on fire with this word. Say who will listen to the sound? Will listen to the sound. A power on my lips. A power on my lips. Jesus has broken the curse. Jesus Broken the curse. He has never lost. He has never lost. Oh, that's all. Oh, that's all. And who are you? Who are you, great who mountain? Are you, great mountain? Who, are you, great who are you, great mountain? 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 Mountain of the press, a mountain of sickness. Who are you, great mountain? Mountain of lack, mountain of poverty. Mountain of sickness, you've got to bow down. Mountain of mental illness, you've got to bow down. Who are you, great mountain? Yeah. Yeah. Who are you great? Who are you great? But you should not bow low. Who are you great? 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 That you should not bow low. Jesus defeated the darkness. Jesus defeated the dark. Jesus defeated the darkness. Jesus defeated the darkness. Yes, he did. Jesus defeated the darkness. Jesus defeated the darkness. And Jesus has broken the curse. Jesus has broken the curse. Jesus has broken the curse. Every day that people put on you, Jesus, Jesus broke. Broken. Yeah, yeah. Jesus has broken the curse. 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 Who are you, great mountain? For you should not bow low. Jesus defeated the darkness, yes, he did. And he has never lost a battle. Who are you, great mountain? 
Thank you to not bow long. My God has broken the curse that was put on your life. And he is never lost. He is never lost. I said, he is never lost. He is never lost. He has never lost. He is never lost. He has never lost. He is never lost. He has 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 never lost. But he's not gonna lose that battle. I declare victory is over you right now. Yeah. yeah. You gotta walk in it. You gotta speak over yourself and say he has never lost a battle. Oh. So we listen to the sound of power on my lips. I know Jesus has broken the curse and he's defeated the darkness. He is never lost. Who are you, great? Who are you, great? Then you should not bow low. Then you should not bow low. Jesus defeated the dark. Jesus defeated the dark. He has never lost. He has never lost. A battle. A battle. Who needs to know that? But he never will. He never will. Yeah. He never will. He never will. Yeah. And he never will. He never will. And he never will. 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 And he never will. He never will. I know he never will. And he never will. He never will. That you should not bow low. Because Jesus has broken every curse. Jesus has broken every curse. When people try to talk about you, Jesus has broken that curse. They tried to lie on your name, but Jesus has broken every curse. Yeah. They said you won't be anything in life. But Jesus has broken every curse. They say you won't make it nowhere. But Jesus has broken every curse. Yeah. Jesus has broken that curse. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Reading from Psalm. 37. And it says, 
Fret not thou self because of evil doers, neither be thou enemies against workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and willow like the green earth. Trust in the Lord and do good so thou dwell in the land and verily thou shall be fed. Delight they thou self also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and the justice as the morning. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thou self because of him who prosper in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thou self in any way. He would do it shall be cut off for those who wait upon Oh, gracious God, we know the children of God. It's all in your hand. And we know that you have a plan. You just want to know. But we just want to say now, remember, think about us now. Help us through these trials. Master, I'm not talking as one who has not felt the burden of life. I'm talking as one, Master, that sometimes I have to get in my own place, call to make it. You know I call your name. I call you. Over job. Come down here and say, Master, we ask him that you look upon all of us and you touch us now. But, Master, we just want to say, I often think about what David said. He said, Weeping. Might endure for a night. If we hold on, Lord, we'll be fine. Master, you know what we need to do. Praise the Lord. Anybody thankful for his mercy and his faithfulness? His mercy endures forever, and I will forever be grateful for what he's done for me. Anybody loves the, press in the presence of God? You ought to type it on the screen. Lord, I want to be in your presence. I want to dwell in your house forever and ever and ever. Oh, 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 if I could just press, press in your presence, behold the beauty of your face, if I could just press, Press in your presence and never leave this place again. If I could just press, press, press in your presence and leave all my cares behind me. For I will be whole, I'll still believe. I will just lay, lay at your feet. For I will be whole, I'll still believe. I will just lay, lay at your feet Right here in your presence Say, Lord, I want to dwell in your house I want to be in your presence I will lay at your feet I will praise your name If I could just pray If I could just pray Press in your presence 
presence. Press in your Behold presence. the beauty of oh, the beauty of your, of your face. face. If I could just press. Press in your presence. Press in your and presence. And never leave. And never leave this place of If I could just press. Press in your presence. Press in your presence. Leave all my leave cares, all my cares behind. behind. I will behold. I will behold. I will believe. I still believe. I will I will just lay at your feet. At your feet. I will be home. I will be home. I will still believe. I will just lay. I will just lay at your lay feet. At your right feet. here, right, right here, here in your, your presence. presence. You are the type on the screen, Lord. I will lay at your feet. I will worship and praise your name forever because your mercy endures forever. Oh. You call me your own, so Lord, I give you me. You own the world, but yet you still want me. You call me your own, so Lord, I give you me. You own the world, and I still you don't know what the world. You call me your own. You call me your own. So Lord, I give you so me. Lord, I give you, you me. You own the world. You own the world. But yet you still want me. But yet you still want you me. Call me own. You, you call me your own. You call me your own. So Lord, I give you me. So Lord, I give you me. You own the world. You own the world. And yet I still don't know. Take my heart, take my mind, take my mind, take my soul, never let me go. Take my heart, take my mind, take my mind, take my soul, never let me go. Take my heart, take my mind, take my soul, never let me go. Because you can have it all. God. Hallelujah. We're going to press into your presence. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, you made a way time and time again. 
when I didn't see a way, you are the way, God. You are the way in the wilderness. You are the river in the desert, God. So we thank you for making a way. Oh, you made a way. When our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. And we're standing here only because you made standing here. Made a Not knowing way. how we'll get through this test. But holding on to faith, you know best. And everything we need, you supply. Cause you've got this. Figured out, watching us now. And when it looks as if we can win, yeah. We're holding on to faith within, yeah. Because everything we need is up. You've got this in control. And now we know that you. Made away when our backs were when our backs were against the wall and they look and it looks as if it was over. Lord, you made away and we're standing here and we're standing here only because you made you made a way made away when our backs were when our backs. And it looked as if it was over. Lord, you made it away. And we're standing here. And we're standing here only because you made it away. So now we're here looking back on where we've come from. Because of you and nothing we've done, we've done to deserve the love and most mercy you show. Your grace was strong enough to pick us, us up, and you, you made a way when our backs were, when our backs were against the wall, and it looked, and it looked as if it was all oh, you. You made away, and we're standing here. And we're standing here only because you made. You made a way. You made away. Yeah. When I pass away, when I pass away against the wall, and it looked, and it looked as if it was all oh, you. You made away. And we're standing here. And we're standing here. Only because, only because you made a way. Oh, cause you move mountains. And you cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles. And there is nothing. That's impossible, and we're standing here only because you you move you move mountains you cause what you cause walls to fall with your power performing performing miracles there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing, and we're standing here only because. Only you move, you move mountains. You cause walls to fall with your power. Perform miracles. There is nothing. There is nothing that's impossible. That's impossible. And we're standing here. And we're standing here only because, only because you move, you move mountains. 
Because you are the power, with your power, performing for me. There is nothing, there is nothing, that's impossible. That's impossible. And you're standing here, and we're standing here, only, only, only because you made it. And we're standing here, only because you made it. And we're standing here, only because you made it. And we're standing here, only because you made it. You made a way. Made a way. Oh, you made a way. You, you made a way. Time and time again, you made a way. You made a way. Oh, you made a way. You made a way. Don't know, don't know how, but you did it. Made a way. Don't know. You made a way. Made a way. Don't, know. Don't know how, but you did it. You made a way. Made a way. Don't know. Don't know how, but you did it. Made a way. Made a way. And I don't way. know why. Don't know yeah. why, but I'm grateful. Don't know why, but don't I'm grateful. Know why. Don't know why, but I'm grateful. I don't know why. Don't know why, but I'm grateful. Don't know why you did it. Don't know why. But you give me time and time again. I don't know why. Don't know why. But don't know why. Don't know why. But I'm grateful. Don't know why. But I'm grateful. Don't know why. But I'm grateful. Yeah. 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 You did it over and over and over, over and over and over. You kept me over and over and over, over and 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 over over and over and over and over and over and over. You did it over and over. Yeah. Over and over and over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And we're standing here only because you made. And we're standing here. Only because you made We're standing here It's not the goodness of my own But we're standing here Oh, only because you made And we're standing here Only because you made Not because made. our parents know and we're standing here Not because our children but it's only because you made the way. Only because you made the way. We're standing here. And we're standing here. Only because you made the way. You made the way. Father, we're grateful for your presence being in this place. Now, Father, I ask that as I prepare to present your word on today, I pray that you'll govern my thoughts and you'll guide my tongue. I pray you let my light shine, but I pray you get the glory. Forgive us of all of our many sins and shortcomings. Then, Father, help us to understand the importance of righteous living in light of your return and help us to live according to your word help your let, allow your spirit to guide and lead us convict us when we're wrong straighten us out and show us which way to go 
Help us, Lord, in these last and evil days. It's in the bold, blessed, and beautiful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank God for our praise team ushering us into the presence of the Lord. Thank God for Deacon Dismute for scripture reading and prayer. Thank you, our Facebook viewers who are tuning in. We bless God for our musicians. Thank God for our audio and video ministry that makes it possible for us to um, do, what, do what we're doing now to ensure that it not only it can be broadcast here in Clay County, but everywhere. Those who willingly tune in, we praise God for them. I want to just highlight also the faithfulness and commitment of our finance team. It's cold outside, but they're still waiting on you. So that's commitment, and I want to um, highlight their commitment um, on today. And not only today, but they're always committed uh, weekly. And I want to say thank God for their faithfulness. Then I want to thank God and say congratulations to Miss Jackie Johnson. She's our youth director here at our church. And she uh, and some others were staff members and teachers for the month of October at Eastside School. And so we praise God and say to Miss Jackie, Congratulations, and uh, I think they ought to give you that award every month because you're good at what you do, and you love children. And um, so I want to say congratulations from myself and for, from our church family. I want to start this sermon series that God has burdened my heart with. I shared it um, a little bit with you on last Sunday. I started gave a thematic thrust for the year about righteous living, and we're dealing with righteous living this year. We're going to try our best to live as best we can for the glorification of God. Not so men can pat us on the back, but so that God can be glorified in all that we say and all that we do. And I understand we are wrapped and this stuff called flesh, and we will falter and fall along the way. But we have an advocate with the Father that we can ask him for forgiveness. Then, as I said on last week in the sermon, in 1 Timothy 3, that there are some sins, some habits that we have to just put away. As the Hebrew writer says, lay aside every sin and weight that so easily beset us. And so we're going to look at the entire book of 1 Thessalonians um, to help us capture this righteous living. Um, and I'm going to do a survey, if you will, of the book and kind of introduce the book to us. And I started again on the third Sunday in November. I preached verses 2 through 10 of chapter 1. So I won't start in chapter 1. I'll just go to chapter 2, and they have it up there for you on Facebook where you can click the link, take you to our YouTube page, and you can view that sermon about a model church, and it'll catch you up to where we'll start in chapter 2 on the following Sunday. But on this day, I kind of want to reintroduce the book because in that sermon I kind of gave a synopsis of the book, but I want to reintroduce the book and kind of put us on, put our mind on this frame of thought concerning the book of 1 Thessalonians. And I want to title this sermon series, and this will be the overarching theme as we preach through this book. I want to entitle this sermon series, Righteous Living in Light of Christ's Return. Righteous Living in Light of of Christ's return and to uphold this whole idea, this whole series, I'm going to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 23 through 24. As I say again in the sermon, now this is not the theme scripture of the book, 
But this is the scripture that gives validity to the sermon series uh, that I'm going to preach with the Lord's help. And um, I've been blessed kind of reading and studying, and I know you'll be blessed as well. So, from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 and 24, for subject purposes, I want to read this. Now, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, and he will surely do it. Again, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Righteous living in light of Christ's return. Righteous living in light of Christ's return. My brothers and sisters, when one start reading through the book of 1 Thessalonians, one is automatically grabbed at the fact that Paul, especially in the latter part of the book, particularly chapter 4 and 5, is dealing with how Christians should live in light of Christ's return. Paul opens this letter by giving commendation to the church and praising them for being a model for other church. As a matter of fact, when you read chapter 1, you'll discover that Paul says that everywhere that he went, he heard only good things concerning this young church, how they lived accordingly to the Word of God. And not only they lived the Word of God, but they also had an evangelistic ministry that extended beyond their walls, that extended beyond their cities. Because Paul says, everywhere I went, they're always mentioning you and how your life is a life that is pleasing to God. Now, Paul founded this church in Thessalonica on his second missionary journey. Paul received a vision from God. And there was a man in his vision that cried out, come and help us. It's called the Macedonian vision in the Bible. And Paul made his way to the region of Macedonia. First docked off a little town called Philippi. Where well, he did ministry there. He converted a lady by the name of Lydia, who was the seller of purple. Not only that, he started a house church in Lydia's house. And then on every Sabbath, he would go down by the river because they was having prayer meeting down by the river. But on one particular day, there was a girl who was vexed with many demons and men of that city were pimping her so that she could tell people fortune for financial gain. And Paul being vexed in his spirit because this young girl kept following them. and says, these are servants of the Most High God. And Paul called the demons out of the girl. They got mad and they reported Paul and Silas to the officials of that town. The Bible says they were put in a Philippian jail. And you know what happened. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas... They prayed and sung hymns unto God. And I like what Harvey Watkins uh, Jr. of the Canton Spiritual say. He said, God got so happy by listening to him, them singing and praying that he started patting his feet to the song. And because of that, the earth starts shaking. An earthquake happened. The Bible says those doors that was once shut, they are now open. And then 
they came out and the jailer was about to kill himself. But Paul says, do yourself no harm for we are all here. And that jailer asked that question, then what must I do to be saved? And Paul says, believe in the Lord Jesus, you and your household shall be saved. And that's what happened. But Paul and Silas was ran out of the city. They was ran out of the city, got on the Ignatian Way, and traveled 100 miles to a town called Thessalonica. That's where we are, my brothers and sisters. After traveling 100 miles, they entered this city of Thessalonica. Paul knew that this was a major city. As a matter of fact, this was the capital city of the region of Macedonia. The population was about 200,000 people on record during the time that Paul made his arrival in that city. It was also another seaport of Macedonia where people from every culture, people from every ethnic background, people from all walks of life would have to pass through Thessalonica because the Ignatian Way was the highway that ran west and east of the Roman Empire. And so Paul figured out that this was a good place to start a ministry to introduce people to Jesus Christ. That was Paul did. But Paul, unfortunately, did not have a long stay in Thessalonica. Word got out about Paul, and everywhere Paul went, Paul had some haters. He would have people coming behind him to tell the people that, listen, don't listen to this false apostle. Don't listen to this false preacher. He's only doing it for a selfish and lucrative gain. But Paul, he was ran out of the city, but he sent Timothy back to give report of the condition of that young church. Because Thessalonica was no old church. They were a young church trying to live as best they could for the cause of Jesus Christ. Remember I told you this is a multi-ethnic, this is a multi-religious place because every known religion of that day was going on in Thessalonica. Matter of fact, to give you a little church history, Christianity was frowned upon in the Roman Empire because Christian worship a God whom people couldn't see. I mean, other gods had statues set up so people could pay homage to them. Other gods had temple where they could go in and pay homage, but they worshiped the one true living God. And because of that, the Roman Empire didn't take light, didn't take light of that. As a matter of fact, they also worshiped the emperor. They worshiped Caesar. But the Christians of that day did not pay homage to Caesar because they understood that there was a king that was greater than Caesar. This is the setting in which Paul founded this church. This is the setting in which these young Christians at Thessalonica live. Paul wanted to encourage them. As a matter of fact, as I shared with you before reading the scripture, that the key verse, if you're taking notes, you may want to write this down because this will help you navigate through the book. The key verse for this entire book is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10, and it reads like this. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serving the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who delivered us from the coming wrath of God. This verse navigates or guides us through the whole book because Paul is letting them know because of your conversion, because you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Listen, the word is out how you've turned from idols, 
how that your culture has was infiltrated with idols, but you turn from idols to the one true God, and not only you turn from idols and you're serving the one true God, but now you are looking for the imminent and inevitable return of Jesus Christ. But listen, not only that's the key verse, but here's something else you need to write down. The key word for this whole book is sanctification. The key word for the whole book is sanctification. You do know we have been saved, we are being saved, and we will be saved. We have been saved, we are being saved, and we will be saved. At my conversion experience, I was saved from the penalty of sin. In my sanctification experience, I'm being saved from the power of sin. And in the consummation of my salvation, when I get to heaven, I will be saved from the very presence of sin. Again, I was saved from the penalty of sin. When I confess hope in Jesus Christ, when I share it with the minister that I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin, that he was buried and on the third day, he, his father raised him from the dead with all power in his hand. I was saved from the penalty of sin because the hymn writer had it right. Jesus paid it all and it's all to him. We owe sin, have left the crimson stain, but he washed us whiter than snow. I was saved from the penalty of sin in my walk with Christ. Now I'm being saved from the power of of sin every day in this sanctification process every day is twofold I'm trying to get rid of everything that is not like God and trying to replace it with the things of God but here's the catch I can't do it in my own strength and in my own power I must rely on the power the person that lives on the inside of me and that is the Holy Spirit. That's why I said last week, holiness is still right. And you can live right. We all can live right if we allow the Holy Spirit to take control of our life. Every believer, I don't care what denomination you're from, every believer ought to be sanctified. You don't have to be of the apostolic faith. You don't have to be Pentecostal you don't have to be church of God in Christ listen Baptist uh, Presbyterian if they believe in Jesus Christ every denomination because we've been blood walked blood blow and blood washed then all of us are sanctified we ought to be sanctified just simply means to be set apart for God's special use and that's why we ought to live our life that's why we ought to live in a way because we ought not want to defile this temple that housed the Holy Spirit. Paul says, and I got to swiftly move, Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians that know ye not that your body is the temple of God. That means we ought not do anything and everything with our bodies because we house the God himself in the person of the Holy Spirit. And when we do any and everything with our bodies, what we are doing, we are defiling, we are disqualifying ourselves for service. But here's the shout. Thank God that every time we falter and fall, we have somebody we can pray to and ask for forgiveness. And the Bible says that if we ask him for it, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Does that mean we just do it because we know he's going to do it? No, because Paul asks a rhetorical question in the book of Romans. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, no, God forbids. That means we don't disgrace the grace of God. We should strive to live a righteous and a holy life. Got to swiftly move.
But I want to tell you that in light of Christ's return, that's why this series is entitled The Way It Is. In light of Christ's return, we should be found living a righteous life. A righteous life. Why then? We should live a righteous life in light of Christ's return. Well, I'm glad you asked. Here's the reason why. Because Christ can return at any moment. We don't know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear. You know, history records that the Mayan calendar suggested that the world was going to come to an end at 2012. But here we are in 2021 and the world is still going on. It's true what the Bible said. No man knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear. I, I mean, I laughed at people. I was a lad of a boy then. But I laughed at people who said that when the year of 2000 came in, that the world was going to come to an end. And guess what everybody started doing? They took their monies out the bank. They, they went and bought all the waters out the grocery store, bought all the canned goods. And here was my reasoning. If the world going to come to an end, why are you buying all that stuff anyway? You won't be around to partake in the water and eat the food, and your money just going to be left here for other folk. But guess what? 21 years later, we are still here because it's true. No one knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear. But he did say, be ready. That means we ought to try to live as best we can. Let me give you Paul's purpose, purposes rather for writing this book, and then I'm hurrying on to a close. First purpose for writing the book of Thess Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, that is, to encourage believers in the light and in face of persecution. He wanted to encourage them because Christian was being mistreated during that day, and then this church was made up of predominantly Gentiles. They, they didn't grow up believing or having a monotheistic faith like the Jews. They grew up worshiping idol gods, but Paul wanted to encourage them that you can persist in the, in the faith despite the persecution that you're facing. But then number two, he wrote to respond to the critics concerning his ministry because, as I said, they said Paul had an ulterior motive for preaching the gospel. Paul had a selfish motive for preaching the gospel. Paul says, when you read, starting at chapter 2, he says, well, you, you know how I was among you. You know my conduct. You know how I acted. You know that I was in it for the right reason. You know that I didn't come trying to take anything from you, but I came giving you the gospel of Jesus Christ. But then thirdly, he wrote to deal with low moral standards and also, he wrote to deal with our standards as it relates to sexual morality. Here's what Paul is saying. When it deals with low morality, there were some lazy folks around the city of Thessalonica. They only wanted handouts, but they didn't want to do anything for it. You, you know those people that are always asking for something and they got help and strength to go out and get a job. Paul says... That's low level of living. Paul says a man that don't work is a man that don't deserve to eat. He says you ought not be lazy. You ought not be a beggar. If you got help and strength, then you ought to go get you a job so you can make an earnest living and not by begging. But then he dealt with the sexual immorality that was going on in that society. Paul says you need to abstain from Every evil, not just some, but for every evil. And then finally he writes, because the overall overarching doctrine that is uh, holding up this entire book is the doctrine of the return of Christ. So fourth, Paul wrote to inform the believers of who would participate in the return of Christ. He, he deals with this doctrine called eschatology. Deal with the things concerning the end times. And they wanted to know because the question was raised about what about our loved ones who died 
and they are, they are dead now in the graveyard, will they miss the return of Christ? And that's what Paul pick, picks up in chapter 4 by saying, particularly at verse 13, that I don't want you ignorant, brethren, concerning them who are asleep that you sorrow not as others who have no hope. But if you believe that Jesus Christ died and was raised again, he said, listen, everyone who believes that is going to participate in, re in the return of Christ. He says stuff like this, and the dead in Christ will rise first, and those who remain shall be caught up and changed in the moments of a twinkling of an eye. Then he ends by saying, comfort one another with these words. That's why Paul wrote, because Paul wanted them to understand that everyone who believes in Jesus will partake of his return. Now, how does this apply to us as I conclude this? How does this apply to us? Well, I'm glad you asked. And I've been saying it all the time. Christ is coming back. And because Christ is coming back, then we ought to be encouraged, even though we may face persecution for living a righteous life. As a matter of fact, not if, but when we face persecution. Because as I said in the sermon last week, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 10, all who desire to live holy will face persecution. So we ought to be encouraged, my brothers and sisters, that we can live a righteous life despite first persecution. We ought to be encouraged even when folks lie on us, even when they try to portray to others this idea of us that they have no no inkling of thoughts about as long as you know that you are being true to God and you're being who God called you to be you're not a fake you're not a phony you're not disingenuous but guess what you are truly authentic and living out the call that Christ have on your life you're gonna be all right and then you ought to live right because as I stated you don't know when Christ is coming you ought not have low morals when it comes to living this life. You ought not be lazy. I said it in the Sunday school this morning. I want to reiterate it right here. God never called anybody to do something who was idle. God always called people in the Bible. When he called them for a job, they was already busy doing something else. They already had a good work ethic and God says if they had a good work ethic in this let me put my hands on them put my spirit on the inside of them then they will have a good work ethic for my name's sake then we can live and persist in the faith knowing that Christ will return you know the return of Christ in my final remarks the return of Christ for the believer is the incentive that we're waiting on for living a righteous life and giving our life for the service of Christ. So as we venture, as we journey in this book of 1 Thessalonians about righteous living in the light of Christ's return, as we stroll through Paul, one of Paul's earliest letters to a group of young Christians in Thessalonica, let us be encouraged, whether you've been walking with God a long time or you just started walking with him. Listen, let us be encouraged, knowing that if we live according the way God say live, when he come back, he's going to reward us. When he return, because he's coming back, don't let folk fool you and don't, don't look and say, well, I have forever, because you really don't. You Listen, there are young graves and there are old graves. So in light of Christ's return, let us live, let us serve the best way we can. And in the words of the hymn, if when you give the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior has come, be not dismayed when men don't believe you. He'll understand and say well done. If when you try, and you fail in your trying, and your hands are scarred from the work you have, been, have begun. 
take up your cross, run swiftly to meet him. He'll understand and say, well done. Oh, when I come to the end of my journey, weary of life, the battle has been fought and the victory has been won. Carrying the staff, the cross of redemption, he'll understand and he'll say, well done. My brothers and sisters, I pray you have been encouraged by this lesson, by this message, as we look forward to the journey through this entire book of 1 Thessalonians. Remember, we should live right in light of the return of Christ because we don't know when he's coming. So I make my exit from the pulpit. Never would have thought a week ago today that my uncle would depart from this world. But guess what? He lived a life that was pleasing to God. And so we're not worried about him because he's at home to be with God forevermore. But the question is for those of us who remain, not only for my family, but those of us who are watching, those of us who are listening, can it be said of us that when we leave, that we did everything God wanted us to do? Did we live a life that honored Christ? Not ourselves, but honored Christ because he will return. My first invitation is to the unbeliever. You're listening to me and you don't know Christ and the pardon of your sin, then guess what? You need to come. Because let me help you. Wrong behavior don't send you to hell. What send you to hell is not believing in Jesus Christ. And if you don't believe in Jesus Christ and if you die before doing that, then guess what? In hell you'll uplift your eyes. Because as I said, he's returning. He's coming back. Don't, don't put it off for tomorrow for what you can do today. Or tomorrow may just very well may be too late. So if you don't know Jesus, get to know him. And he'll help you. Listen, let me help you. You won't become perfect in this lifetime. No, you won't. None of us will. But we can strive to live a righteous life. And those things that so easily beset us, the more we walk with God in this sanctification process, the more he can help us. I was thinking on the drive to church as I was meditating for the sermon, and I start reflecting on my life, and I looked at things that used to take me away from the will of God, and I said, Lord, thank you for growth. Thank you for letting me know that you're working on me. Because I want to be ready and I want to be right when he returns. Because he did say, the book of Matthew, he said, whatever you're doing when he's returned, keep on doing that. If you're on the housetop, stay there. If you're on the, in the field, stay there. Because listen, he may just come when your work is not done. So listen, make sure your work is done. If you're saved and you say, well, pastor, I need help. Living right is hard. Satan comes at me from every angle. Sometimes, even from my own family, I'm ostracized. I'm pushed aside because I'm trying to do what the Lord wants me to do. Sometimes it's discouraging. Seems like I'm the only one, but let me tell you, you're not by yourself. And let me tell you, if you keep living for him, I promise you, he'll reward you. And I want to pray for those who say, I'm struggling. I really want to do the right thing, but I'm struggling to do the right thing. I want to pray for you. And those of you who are wrestling with decisions, I want to pray for you. Because every decision we make needs to be a decision that's going to honor God. Not honor us. Not that, not that it's pleasing to us, but that it's pleasing to God. I want to pray for you too. Let us live a righteous life. Not in our own strength. But 
with the help from the Holy Spirit, we can do it. I'm going to pray. Listen, pray for our entire church family. There are those who are sick among us, those who lost loved ones, those who are dealing with depression. Listen, this pandemic have not only hurt people physically, but even mentally and emotionally. Listen, in class this week while we was doing our virtual intensive, one of my cohort members, because she's up in age, she said ever since March, she has been confined to her house. She said someone bring her groceries. She don't, she have not been out since March, according to her words. So she's in total isolation. And she was sharing with us how, you know, it's a mental thing. Mentally, this pandemic is wearing on her. And she's not the only one. There are others. Mentally, this pandemic has done a work on you. But I want to tell you, God in heaven, he can help you mentally, he can help you physically, and he can help you emotionally. God can do just that. So I'm going to pray, and as I pray, also I will ask you to pray for the Brown family as we say our final goodbyes to a member of our family today. Please keep us lifted in your prayers. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. Help us now, Lord, to live a righteous life in light of your return. Because the truth is you can come back for us at any moment. And not only come back for us individually, but you can come back and call us all to eternity who believe in you. You can rapture us away. So help us to be found pleasing in your sight when you return. We got some areas, all of us got some areas we need to work on. And from this day, help us to work on them. So we can live a righteous life in light of your return. As we walk through the book of 1 Thessalonians, Father, help us to glean insight. Help us to hide your word in our hearts so we won't sin against you. Every person that's sick, whether they're a member of our church, our community, our Facebook community, wherever they may be viewing from, if they're sick, touch their bodies. Lift up. Those who are confused in mind. I lift up those who are dealing with mental illness. I lift up those who are emotionally drained. I lift us to you right now, Father, because we need you. And we can't get along without you. I ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit will take control of our lives. I pray that our appetites begin to change, that we'll desire more of you and less of the world because we want to be pleasing in your sight. Now, Father, I pray for those who don't know you in the pardon of their sin. I pray that the Holy Spirit, this word, will prick their heart and they'll want to get to know you for themselves. Father, as we prepare to leave now, give us traveling grace to our various destination. Keep your angels encamped around about us. To that end, we give your name, praise, glory, and honor. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord calls his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Look for this Wednesday, church family and Facebook viewers. 
Look for this Wednesday. We will reconvene Bible study. And I'll either do a live study or upload a video for our Bible study this coming week. God bless you and God keep you as our prayer. Make sure you live right because this is the year of righteous living. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want for me. Oh, 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 what I want to say, holiness, holiness, it's what I long for, holiness, it's what I need, yeah, holiness, holiness, it's what you want, for me oh. so take my heart and mold it take my mind conform transform it take my will yeah Conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. I'm gonna get it right this time. So take my heart and mold it, take my mind, transform it. Take my will, yeah, conform it 